Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I'll introduce you to how to draw a product sketch like this using a free sketch app called Autodesk. About this app Autodesk I'll be using today, it's free but it's got so many features. And it's an app for everyone from beginners to advanced users. And this is definitely a must-have app, and I really really recommend it to you. So I'll show you how to use this app in today's video. I actually did a tutorial covering all the features of this app in my previous video. So if you can, watch that one first, and come back here as it will make things easier for you, I think. I will put the link in the description box down below, so please check it out from there. There is this interesting tool called the ruler tool in this Autodesk app. So using that, I'm going to draw a sketch of this chair I use, which they call an egg chair. For those who want to draw illustration of things like these, or they call a product sketch, this app, Autodesk, is perfect when drawing a sketch for products such as a car, a dryer, a watch, etc. So today I will teach you how to draw a product sketch. So this video is a must watch for anyone who wants to draw something like this. And it would be great if you could watch this video until the end. Okay, let's open Autodesk. Once you open the app, you should first see a white canvas. This time, I want to trace with lines after inserting an image on top of this, so place the image first. To do so, select this image button at the top, as you can see your camera roll from there, so select an image of your choice. I place this image on my X chair this time. You can pinch in or out to adjust the size, or from these tabs at the top, you could flip it vertically or horizontally as well. There's also this arrow like mark where you can make minor adjustments moving around. Once you set the position, tap done to go back to the home screen. There's a layer adjustment panel on the right, and as you tap this image, you should see this slider that says opacity level. So lower the opacity a little bit to make it slightly visible. After that, tap the plus button at the top to add a new layer. So now we have a blank layer over the image. I will be drawing lines on this blank layer from now on. For the brush, we have a bunch of options here on the left. Open the tab at the very top, where you should be able to find a panel that says library. And there you can find a variety of brushes that aren't listed on the left. This time, I'll use an ink pen that can be found in a group called Legacy. Ink pen helps you control writing pressure very well, where the weaker the writing pressure is, the thinner the line gets, and the stronger the writing pressure is, the thicker it gets. Here in Autodesk, swipe right with three fingers to proceed, and swipe left to go back. There are small buttons at the bottom, and as you tap this one here, a shortcut panel will appear. Open the one that says double pack. Like this, there should be two buttons on the screen. These are the buttons where you can set the brush thickness as well as its color. So for instance, touch the brush right here, and as you swipe left and right, you can adjust the line thickness there. So for instance, like this, as I pull this towards right, the brush gets thicker instantly. It comes in a lot handy having this one on the screen, so make sure to have this double pack display on the screen when drawing. From here, I'm going to be tracing this image freehand, but as I try to trace, it's kind of difficult to do it freehand. The line is kind of off too, so here I'm going to use this tool I recommend called a ruler. The ruler can be found in the middle of this toolbar at the top. And here you can find three types of ruler here. But this time, select the middle one that says Curve Ruler. As you tap on this Curve Ruler, this mountain-like ruler shows up. And by moving these buttons on the edge and using a Curve Ruler, 
You can trace with a beautiful line like this. So now I'll introduce you to draw an object by tracing. I want to start with the right side here by moving these three dots with the upper pencil and adjusting them. Then adjust the brush thickness and trace. A tip here is not to hold and draw a line lightly instead to draw nicely. Once you did that, keep tracing lines. Next here, the hip of this chair. Set these points accordingly and trace like this. Try not to create a curve all at once and trace little by little. As you saw, the ruler can be out of position from here and there, so watch out for that and try to trace lines without moving the ruler too much. This might be difficult in the beginning as it takes some time to try to trace a curve line according to this object and I struggle with this part a lot too. But as you get used to this, I'm sure you get to do this a lot faster, so please practice multiple times. In case you really struggle with tracing a line though, zoom in the image like this. This way you should be able to trace the line accordingly. So a tip is to keep the process of zooming in and moving the ruler accordingly in order to draw a beautiful line. And remember that you don't need to do this to perfection. It's totally okay if it's out of position a little bit and it's better to keep on going instead because you can always make changes later. So just keep working on the next one. For a product sketch, even though you do need to draw an outline well enough, the line doesn't need to be perfectly drawn like you would for a sketch. So try to work on it roughly like you would for a rough sketch, which helps you draw a nice product sketch. So please keep this in mind as you draw. I work on the body of this chair, so let's go ahead and work on the legs here. For this part too, we can use both a curved line and a straight line tools. Using a ruler, try to draw a line nicely. Once you're done with tracing the line, from the show and hide options here, Hide this image layer for now and leave the outline only. Then work on the gap that's missing. If necessary, add more lines too. Okay, just like this, I'm done with drawing the black lines. I'll be coloring from here, so for this image layer, set the opacity level back to 100% from 10%. Select Move tool at the top and move it to the edge of the screen. It can be anywhere, but make it smaller and place it at the upper left so you can refer to it for the color. For the sketch too, you can always move it or change the size using your move tool, so just place it to wherever you prefer. From here, I'll start coloring. Remember to have a different layer when coloring. If you click on the plus button at the upper right on the layer panel, you can add a new layer. So create a new layer and move the black sketch layer from earlier to the very top. I'm not going to color on this layer, but color on a different layer below that. Please remember to do this as things can be complicated if you don't do this. So again, you should have a black sketch layer at the very top, and then a layer with colors below that. For the brush, there is one called airbrush in the basic brush set. So grab the one, pick red color, and start coloring like this. The brush size is slightly small, so in this case, swipe right here to make it bigger like this. So just like this, color this bar with an airbrush, and it's totally fine to stick out a little bit too, as you can erase them with an eraser later. So just color roughly for now.
Once you color the base color, let's work on or the color the part that's got a darker color or the shadow part like here. It's okay to work on the same layer. To change the color, you could tap the double pack option or if you slide up and down here on the color selection, the more you slide up, the lighter it gets, and the more you slide down, the darker it gets, though I'm not sure if you can tell right now. So as you move it up, the color gets kind of whitish red, and this becomes darker in color as you move it down like this. We can keep the red color fixed while adjusting the brightness level, making it lighter or darker. So set the brightness level here, and color the highlighted part as well as the shadow part. For the shadow part, it's totally fine to color with a darker red color. It's almost black underneath the cushion of this sofa too. And a tip here is not to hesitate and feel free to color the part black completely. This time there aren't much highlighted parts for this chair, so you don't really need to add highlights as much. So just add some red color as the base and shadows, creating a good contrast here. If you want to blend in the color better, from the tool panel in the brush section, you can find a blur tool. So grab a blur tool, adjust the thickness here again, and trace over here so that the darker red part here and the lighter red part blend in well, which makes it look more natural. So make sure to adjust them with a the blur tool later on. Alright, I'm done with coloring, so now let me go ahead and erase the edge sticking out with an eraser. The eraser can be found in the tool panel on the left too, so grab it from there and erase nicely. Okay, just like this, I managed to erase them nicely, and even though it looks good enough as it is, I want to add some sort of textures or express the puff kind of feeling when you sit on a chair. So select a new layer. Select a blank new layer, and for the brush, you can find one called Chalk Pastel. This Chalk Pastel brush can be found in the basic brush section. Using this brush, you get to express the puff kind of feeling of this chair. So add textures over here with it to make it look more realistic. A tip will be to trace over the darker area like here with a chalk pastel brush to make it look better. In this layer panel, you can find options that says blend, or which is also called a blend mode or join mode. But this is where you can set the color overlapping with the layer below. If you set a color burn or color burn linear, the color gets a lot darker or it gets lighter if you set it clean. But it might be a good idea to work on it once you set the join mode here too. So let me erase this once and this time I set the overlay blending mode. So while setting the overlay blending mode, color with a darker color and for the brush, use a choke brush or choke pasta brush and trace over here.
Okay, at last I want to color the legs part here before I finish. Select a different layer again when coloring the legs part and grab a color to color. Regarding a way to color this time, roughly color the base color with a brush which can be anything, add shadows and highlights over it, and erase any parts that stick out with an eraser. There are tools such as paint bucket tool available too, so if you prefer to use that, please go ahead and use it. If you want to know more about how to use the paint bucket tool, please watch my previous video where I talk about it in details. I will put the link in the description box, so please watch it from there if you like. Alright, just like this, it's complete. What do you think? If you look at the layers, you can see that I didn't use many this time. We have the ones that were color for the body as well as the leg part. And for the one that's outlined at the very top right here. Then we have the image layer at the bottom. You can erase the image layer when exporting. Today I did a tutorial for beginners by drawing some lines over an image which is called image trace. But even just with this image trace feature, you can create something that looks pretty decent. I tried and drew this stylish Chemex coffee filters as I wanted to, and it turned out really great. But for these rather complex designs, I'm thinking of introducing you to how to create them in my paid online community called iPadMate. In my iPad Mate community, I do live streamings every week where I teach my members how to do these things step by step. So if you're interested or if you want to master your iPad, please check out my community. I will leave the link down below, so please check it out from there. Alright, that's all for today. It was the Rolo tool, which was the key in today's video. So you two, good luck and master the use of this ruler. I'll be doing more tutorial videos on Autodesk. Since it's a free app, I want all of you to master it too. So please look forward to my upcoming videos. And please give it a thumbs up if you like this video. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye.